Good day, all of you wonderful new creations, new creation women. This is Ann Windsor. Are you ready for lesson 20? I just so appreciate all of you that have been joining me for these lessons in the new creation woman. And I pray that they have been a benefit to you. Little here, little there, line upon line, lesson upon lesson. I pray the Holy Spirit is bringing these truths to you that you're planting in your heart as you go through your daily situations and you are finding yourself enriched by putting on the new you. Hallelujah. Well, in this lesson, we're going to be talking about guarding your mind and keeping your body, guarding your soul, really, your mind, your will, and your emotions. We're not going to talk too much about the will, but I think everything that you act upon in guarding your mind and your emotions and keeping your body, your will is involved because it takes the decision of the will to carry out what you're learning. So we're going to have a rich time. Just are you ready for a rich time? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for your word. Oh, and it is so rich. And that's what makes us rich, Father, because you have sent us your word. There is no doubt about what your will is because you have written it to us, Father, in page upon page in the wonderful letters to the church. And we are the church, the body of Christ. And these letters that you had Paul and James and Peter and John write, Father, oh, in the church dispensation, letters to us about who we are in Christ and who he is in us. Father, I pray that you will give the women that are listening, Father, studying these realities, these in Christ realities, that you will enlighten the eyes of their understanding, Father, and that they can come to see clearly all their completeness in him. And Father, I thank you today for the Holy Spirit guiding and teaching. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a little time now and review our foundational verses we didn't go over them the last time, so I wanted to, for us to read them together again as we begin this lesson from 2 Corinthians 5.17 and Galatians. If any woman is in union with Christ, she is the work of a new creation. A new world has at once opened upon her. In Christ, it is not race, gender, or social status, but being a new creation that counts with God. In Christ, all are one, and all are the same new creation. Galatians 3.28 and 6.15 Well, as a new creation in Christ... A woman who is in a brand new world, you do have responsibilities that come with being born again into the kingdom of God, just like you've had responsibilities under your first birth, being born into this world. And one of your major responsibilities, I would say your first one, because everything else depends on it, is for you to guard your mind and your body. When God put Adam in the garden, he said, dress it and keep it. And that word keep means to guard. So that was before the fall. That was right after Adam was created. So the very first responsibility that Adam was given after his being created was to guard the garden that God had put him in. Well, your life, your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, your body is the garden of you the new creation. And God wants you, he wants you to have the responsibility of keeping them for him, guarding them for him. 
And so he has put his son in you to help you do just that. You, the new creation, are to guard your mind and body. As we've read in 2 Corinthians 5.17, If any woman be in Christ, she is a new creation. She has experienced a new birth inwardly. This new creation that you have become in Christ is Christ living in you. Put your hand on yourself and say, It is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. Just for clarification again, you are a spirit, you possess a soul. You live in a body. Your, quote, self, your personality that we would call your self that makes you uniquely the person that you are is in your soul. Jesus, however, with his personality, lives in the real you. The real you is a spirit. You possess a soul, like we talked about last week. Your mind is your possession. Your emotions are your possession. Your will is a possession of your spirit, and you live in a body. Your spirit is king because King Jesus lives there. Your spirit has top priority. Jesus has top priority. Your soul, then, is the servant of you the recreated spirit. Your soul is the servant of Jesus who lives within you. Your body is the house or just the slave that carries out the instructions that the king gives. So when we say it is no longer, when you say it is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me, you are not referring to your possession, your soul. You're referring to the real you, you, the spirit that's been born again. It's no longer, your recreated spirit is no longer the old sinful you that lives. It's Christ that lives in you. Galatians 2.20, that verse is. Now, we want to focus on the fact that you as a new creation, since you have Christ in you, your spirit is complete. There is nothing lacking, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing shadowy, nothing doubtful, nothing questionable in your recreated spirit because there are none of those things in Jesus. And Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, lives in you, the spirit. You, the new creation, is complete. Because now, the reason is, because the one who is complete <laughs> lives in you and he has all that you need for your soul to be complete and your body to be complete. So your assignment then as a new creation, as a spirit who is a new creation, is to guard your female soul. Learning what a female soul is, its reactions, its emotions, its thinking is important. The priorities of a female soul. God has given the female soul certain priorities just like he's given the male soul certain priorities. These were given through creation. So I'm just kind of throwing that out there. It'd be interesting for you to become acquainted with your own female soul, its weaknesses, its strengths. When you know its weaknesses, you can use the things that are in Jesus who is in you to strengthen your weak areas, to make them strong. So you go from weakness to strength in those areas where you're currently weak in your soul. That's another whole lesson, but it's an idea that I want to give you. Know your own soul. You, the new creation, is complete because the one who is complete, 
has all you need for your soul and body to be complete. So your assignment is to guard your female soul and body. And what do you use? You use your heavenly armor and the weaponry that God has given you. Ephesians 6 tells us that our armor is righteousness, which we have looked at that word in a previous lesson. Another part of our armor is truth, knowing truth, knowing you are the righteousness of God in Christ, knowing you have peace with God, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace with God. You don't always have peace with people, but you have peace with God through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then there is the helmet of salvation. And as you get your mind renewed with the word, the principles of salvation will come to take up residence in your mind. Then we have the shield of faith. What is that for? Specifically, it says it's for quenching fiery darts the devil throws at you. Faith in the principles of salvation that you have put on like a helmet. And faith in those principles resisting the fiery darts of the enemy. And then our last piece of armor is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So that is your weaponry and your armor. Heavenly. It's given to you from heaven. Nothing conquers heavenly armor. Nothing, if we use it consistently. You, the spirit, the new creation, are to guard your female soul and body with heavenly armor and weaponry. This is how you put on the new you. God already put the new you in you. Now you put the new you on your soul and your body by using your heavenly armor. To guard your mind, your will, and your emotions, and your body. You guard yourself from the fiery darts. You guard yourself from female instabilities and emotional reactions and different things. You guard yourself. This really, what we're talking about here, is really the supernatural life. We're talking about living the supernatural life. Paul commands us, even, in Ephesians 4.22, he says, put on the new man, the new mankind. That doesn't mean male. That means the new mankind. If you go back to the beginning of our studies, if you'd like to get a book, my book here, The New Creation Woman, is available that we're studying out of. It's available through Amazon. And at the beginning, we talked about how man did not mean male. It meant mankind. We talked about that in the first chapters under the first creation in Adam. Well, now in Christ, who is the second Adam, there is a new mankind. And you are part of it. That's why it says in Christ there's neither male nor female. You're all one. You're all the same kind of new creation. Whether you're in a male body or a female body. And then Paul in Ephesians 4.22 commands us. You know, we don't take, when we read the epistles, we don't take the things that we're told to do as commands, but we should. Paul commands in Ephesians 4.22, put on the new mankind, the new you, that put on the new creation that you have become. <clears throat> Why should you? Your mind will be more peaceful, your emotions more steady, your will, more obedient. People cry, women especially. We want to be obedient to the Lord. We want to be the handmaiden of the Lord. Well, if you will learn who is in you, who you are as a new creation, and you will make the effort to put on that new creation, there is no better way that you can please the Father and be the handmaid of the Lord than to put on who is in you as the new creation which is Christ. Then Christ is on you, he's in you, he's on you. It is to your benefit for you to stay alert spiritually. That, that takes training. It's like a soldier. You have the roles of being a soldier, a farmer, and an athlete. Paul talked about when in the epistle to Timothy. 
So a soldier is on the alert all the time for an enemy combatant. And as new creation women that are living with our spirit as king, our soul as servant, and our body as slave, we stay on the alert. It is to your benefit that you stay alert spiritually all the time. If you wake up in the night, I've had some bad dreams lately. The minute I wake up, my mind, your mind, and your emotions are all caught up in that bad dream. But right away, I stay alert spiritually because that dream could take my peace away and make me have a bad day. I could start the day a bad day because of the hangover quote I've had from that dream. So even there is an example of how I've currently had to practice staying alert spiritually. Make staying alert spiritually your top priority as you go through your everyday life. Just stay on the alert. Jesus has come to live in you. He has come to live in you so that he can help you. He can help you to stay alert, to complete you in all your circumstances of life. There isn't any circumstance you're going to go through today that Jesus isn't going to be with you. In Hebrews 13, 5, he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Hallelujah. And Romans 8, 37 says, Everything you need to be more than a conqueror is in Christ who is in you. There wasn't anything that Jesus didn't conquer. And so he who is the conqueror is living in us. And he is the enabler. He will enable you to conquer as he did. Hallelujah. Huh. Well, our verse that we're going to look at specifically today is in Colossians 2.10. So let's look at it for just a second here. And then we're going to look at some different versions of it. Colossians 2.9 and 10 reads, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in a bodily form. And in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. The Living Bible. So you have everything when you have Christ. And you are filled with God through your union with Christ. He is the highest ruler with authority over every other power. Now let's unlock that those two verses a little bit. I want to go back and read Colossians 2, beginning at verse 1. Paul, writing to the Colossians, says, I want you to know how hard I am contending for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not met me personally. I could say that I am writing this and I am writing to you that haven't met me personally. My goal is that you may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that you may have the full riches of having complete understanding in order that you may know the mystery of God. Hallelujah. The mystery of God, namely Christ. Verse 3. Christ in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Verse 4. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you with fine-sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, which I am, I'm present with you in spirit. And I delight to see how disciplined you are, and how firm your faith in Christ is. The heading then over the next portion is spiritual fullness in Christ. Verse 6. So then, as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. And then verse 7, Colossians 2.7, mentions four things of how you continue to live your life in him. First, rooted in him. 
built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and lastly, overflowing with thanks, thankfulness. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Verse 8. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the lower or elementary spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. So that tells us there are spiritual forces in this world, but they are elementary compared to Christ. Yes, in Christ, all the fullness of deity lives in a bodily form. And in Christ, you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every principality and power. Verse 10. Now, when it says he's the head over every principality and power, that doesn't mean like people think of Job that God looses the devil on you. No, it means Jesus conquered the forces that have come to destroy you. God doesn't have control over the spiritual forces to loose them on you to destroy you. He has control. Jesus conquered them through his death, burial, and resurrection. And now he has given you authority over all these forces that want to destroy you. That's what this means. That's why he is the head now, the authority, the supreme authority over these destructive forces. He doesn't want them destroying you. In the Old Testament, people didn't have any authority over the devil. They barely even knew anything about him. First 10 versions. We've looked at a couple of these in the slide. In him you are made full. In him you are made, in Christ you are made full. American Standard. Amplified. In him you have been made complete. Achieving spiritual stature through Christ. Before you were born again you had no spiritual standing. You had no spiritual stature. But now that you're a new creation, you're standing tall in the presence of God. Achieving spiritual stature through Christ, and he is the head over all rule and authority of every angelic and earthly power. Complete Jewish, it is in union with him, in union with him, that you have been made full. Evangelical heritage, you have been brought to fullness in him. Expanded. You have a full and true life. You have a full and true life in Christ. Passion translation. Your own completeness is now found in him. You are completely filled with God as Christ's fullness overflows within you. He overflows. I'll put within you a well of water springing up, overflowing with everlasting life. Our next point, guarding my female soul. Wholeness for mind, will, and emotions. I like to always like to use a very simple definition for what it means to be normal, to be whole, to be normal. And if you go to the doctor, one of the very first things they do is check your temperature. And all the nations of the world, whether it's Fahrenheit, Celsius, whatever it is, they have a, a number that they say, oh, you're normal, your temperature's normal, or your temperature's up a little bit, or your temperature's down a little bit. Well, here in America... Normal for us is according to Fahrenheit, and that is 98.6. So I always say normal is 98.6. I know if my mind is troubled, it's not 98.6. I know if my emotions are upset, they're not 98.6. I know if I'm confused and don't know what to choose to do, my, uh, my will is not 98.6. 
If I have pain in my body, my body is not normal. It's not 98.6. Normal to me means the way God created it to be. He didn't create your mind to be troubled, your emotions to be troubled, your will to be troubled, your body. He didn't create us for trouble. So, huh, the simple definition that I put on wholeness is healthy. 98.6, you have a normal temperature. Emotionally, you have an emotional, you have a normal temperature. It, your spirit's already normal because Jesus lives there and he's the standard for normal. So you get Jesus living in your soul and it'll be more normal. You get Jesus living in your body, quickening your body more by his spirit. Your body will be more normal. Victory over mood swings, anxieties, insecurities, and other problems and temptations that plague women. These are the things that keep you from being normal. Mood swings, anxieties, insecurities, and other problems and temptations that plague you as a woman. Well, in Christ, you can have victory over these things. You, the new creation, can speak. You, the new creation, can speak the will of God into your soul and restore and preserve it and make it normal. Mind, you settle down. You're not going to think fear thoughts right now. Emotions, you settle down. Peace to you. I, I speak to that storm that you're in right now and I command it to be at peace. Emotions, you don't have to figure out what to do. Cast this situation on the Lord, etc., etc. You, the new creation, can speak the will of God into your soul and restore or preserve it and make it normal. You, the new creation, make your soul function the way God intends. You, the new creation, cause your soul to be a suitable companion. Hallelujah. Don't let negative emotions continue to run their course. Don't let tormenting thoughts continue to inhabit your mind. Drive them out. Drive them out. And bring your emotions into line by speaking scripture. Then by prayer, if needed. Or if anyone is afflicted, James said, let him pray. Prayer, praise, dancing, rejoicing, worshiping. These are all things that help maintain that 98.6 temperature. <laughs> Your thoughts now, your thoughts affect your emotions. Thoughts are translated into feelings and then your body responds to your mental and emotional state. So your thoughts, that's what the devil does, fiery dart, get your emotions all wrought up and affect your body. Once you keep your mind on normal, keep your mind on normal. This is where the battleground is. We've been talking about that a lot lately. A lot of people have been talking about the mind. Once you keep your mind on normal, your emotions will get turned around. And your body will enjoy a release from stress. Use scripture to command your soul so it will obey you. Only the word of God can silence and subdue an unruly soul. Why? Because it says in Hebrews 4 that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword and it is able to deal with the spirit and the soul independently. Quick and powerful. That means it's faster than the thoughts. Faster than the thoughts that are going through your mind like machine gun bullets. The, whole, the word of God can overtake them. Silence them. Use scripture to command your soul so it will obey you. Only the word of God can silence and subdue an unruly soul. These are the different uh, things that are in this week's lesson here in the manual. I'm just added to them and modified them some and I'm going down through them. Say to yourself, repeat this after me right now. With heaven's resources, I, the new creation, Maintain my soul. 
You can put in whatever else you'd like there. Fill it in the blank, so to speak. I, the new creation, with heaven's resources, maintain my whatever it is. Peace of mind. Quietness emotionally. Keep myself from being undisturbed. Now let's talk about your body. Guarding the female body. <laughs> Peace for your body in times of change. You know, sometimes we have accidents. We fall down, calamities happen, the calamities of life. But there Jesus said he was anointed to heal those that had been bruised by the calamities of life. So, regardless of what has caused the disturbance in your body, if it's an accident, if you have had a calamity of some sort, if you've been attacked by a sickness or a disease, if something has sprung up on the inside of you, like I've shared before when I had a case of shingles unexpectedly, didn't even know that that little virus was hiding in my body. So again, staying on guard like we talked about at the beginning will help you stay on guard spiritually through the day. Hallelujah. Because when you do, then you're going to be aware of the resources that are in you to deal with whatever comes up. So guarding the female body, guarding my female body, <clears throat> peace for my body, peace for my body in times of change. Hormonal changes, pregnancy, aging, health for my body for a long life, health. Health for my body in times of change. Your body, Psalms 139, 14, says that these female bodies of ours were fearfully and wonderfully made, handcrafted by the hand of God. Psalm 139, 14, David says, Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. Did you know that in Genesis, that the two words that are used when God made the body of man and God made the body of woman are different? They're two different words. In Genesis 2-7, it says, God formed man's body from the dust of the ground. And that word in the Hebrew is the word Y-A-S-A-R, Yasar. That means to fashion, to form, to frame. Yasar. In Genesis 2-22, where it says, God formed put Adam to sleep, and took out a rib. In the Hebrew, that's really the word side. But that is a different word, and it says, and from that he made a woman. So in Genesis 2-7, now the King James Version I'm talking about, says formed when Adam's body was created. And Genesis 2-22 uses the word made or when woman's body, when our bodies were created. And that word in the Hebrew is B-A-N-A, -A, Bana, 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 however it's pronounced. And that word means God built our bodies specifically with unique characteristics, female characteristics that would enable us to bear offspring. Bena. So that's two different words. I heard someone teach on that one time years ago. That when God made Adam, he just threw the mud together and out he came. But when he made woman, he really labored over it. And he just made us just very fearfully and wonderfully and mysteriously. <laughs> and then they used these two different verses in that teaching. 
It was just a fun little teaching, but it made the point that God labored over our bodies as women, more intensely even than he did over male bodies when he made them. Now this is an interesting thing of what Adam said. Adam said when he saw Eve, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman or woo man, for she was taken out of man. And the word woo man or woman means man with a womb. So if you want to really get technical, split hairs about it, you are a man with a womb. <laughs> You have a female soul, and that makes a difference. Big difference there, too. Now, let me ask you some questions. What was the body of Eve like after she was created? Would she have had pain in childbirth? Would she have had hormonal issues or menopause? after God created her. Well, stop and think about it a little bit. These things that we deal with now in our female bodies are the result of the sin of Adam and Eve. Painful childbirth was announced to Eve as a result of sin. God didn't curse her with painful childbirth, if you really study those verses, he is telling her the results of what she's going to reap because she sinned. God said it was because of Adam the earth was cursed, and God specifically spoke a curse on the serpent, but he did not curse the woman. He told her the results of what the sin that they had committed would be. Painful childbirth was announced after the fall in Genesis 3.16. Now that you are in Christ, the consequences that attended Eve's sin can be superseded. Just like we supersede the law of gravity with the law of lift. Now that you are in Christ, the results of Eve's sin on our female bodies can be superseded. Wow! By the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. If you will really to begin to live out of this completeness that it says you have in Him, He will heal these issues and counsel you with practical steps to walk out health in your female body. Keep learning. Keep learning the power of your words. Keep learning the extent of your redemption. Paul said in Philippians 3, I want to lay a hold of Christ. I want to know him like he has laid a hold of or knows me. I have heard of many women having painless childbirth. See, knowing Christ is the key here. Knowing he who is full of treasures for you. And and walking that supernatural walk with him every day, leaning on him about everything. I've heard of many women having painless childbirth, and especially in these areas, we don't think about healing or restoration being applied to these issues, being covered. But whatever is a result of the fall is covered by redemption. And all of these Painful female issues are the result of Adam and Eve's sin. God did not create Eve to have these issues in her body. She was perfect in the day that God created her, and he looked at everything he created and said it's very good. So there were not any of these issues in her future until after her and Adam sinned. I have heard of many women having painless childbirth. They were lively on the stools, as it says in Exodus of the women of Moses' time. But if a woman doesn't know that such a benefit is available, she can't believe and have it. 
So you may, that's why I'm telling you in this lesson the benefits that God has for your female body. He hasn't forgotten it. It's very uniquely made. He spent a lot of time on the female body when he created it. Seek the one who is filled with treasures, as we read in Colossians. He has a gem for you in your situations, whatever they may be. He has an answer. He has a little solution for you. That's your gems. He's full of solutions. His treasures are solutions for your life, redeeming you. Here are some things that you can study to draw out or meditate or find out more about who he is to you and in you. When you read statements about him, take special note of them. Things that he said about himself or things that the prophets have said about him. Titles that Jesus has. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the Good Shepherd. He's the Bishop of your soul. For He's the Word that took on flesh. Titles that he has that indicates who he is and what he does for you. If he's the Prince of Peace, he's the Prince for your peace. First, peace with God, then peace within yourself. And also, names that he has. The Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, the I Am. Names that he has unfold. Names that he has unfold his part in his relationship with you. Now, to overcome daily, Jesus said in Matthew 6.34, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't be fretful about yesterday. Paul said, I forget those things that are behind yesterday's things, and I press on toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. Jesus said, the evil one and his temptations that you're going to face today are sufficient to deal with. That's Matthew 6, 34. The evil of today is sufficient to overcome, so take no thought for yesterday or tomorrow. We've been studying about walking after the Spirit. How you follow the Spirit, you the Spirit, you the re new creation follow the Spirit, and then your soul follows you, the Spirit, and then your body follows the soul, follows the Spirit, follows the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so we've talked about walking after the Spirit. Walk after the Spirit each moment. This is a challenge. I know that in every circumstance, in every responsibility. As you walk after the Spirit, you will be living the supernatural life. Just think about Jesus if you want to see what the supernatural life was. Did any of the Pharisees or the Sadducees ever confront him with anything he didn't have the answer to? No. Did the disciples ever get themselves into circumstances he couldn't reconcile? No. Did they ever have a need he couldn't handle? No. <clears throat> so that is what it will be like for you when you live the supernatural life. The Holy the Spirit life, the supernatural life, is the victorious life. Because the Holy Spirit does not know how to fail. Jesus in you does not know how to fail. The Holy Spirit is in you to cause you to manifest Christ in all things. Sometimes Jesus is bold. Sometimes he's as meek as a lamb. Sometimes he's the healer. Just all the different facets that he is. The Holy Spirit will help you manifest that part of him that needs to be manifested in your particular circumstance. The Holy Spirit in you, the Holy Spirit in you walks after the Word of God. Have you thought about that? He confirms the Word, the signs following. The written Word. He works with the written Word. Walk when you walk the Word way. The Word way. That's why study the Word of God. Study the Word of God. Oh, David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. If you read Psalm 119, 
You just read it over and over. 165 verses David spent telling what the word meant to him and how he did it. And as he did it, God gave him victories. When you walk the word way, you know you are walking the way the Holy Spirit walks. Mark 16, 20. And the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word with signs following. You are on safe ground with God when you walk in his word. And primarily, we have the Old Testament and we have the New Testament. And the new is given to you. God said in Hebrews, I will make a new covenant with them in those days. Not like the old covenant, but a new covenant where I write my laws on the fleshy tables of their heart. So when you walk the word way, you know you are walking the way the Holy Spirit walks. You are on safe ground with God when you walk in the word. The in Christ realities and the spiritual ways they operate will give you instant power over sinful thoughts and desires and set you free from past hurts and traumas. In Christ realities. If you haven't been taught those very much, just Google in Christ realities. Oh, or whatever search engine that you use. And a whole list usually of scriptures. Who I am in Christ. Who Christ is in me. All kinds of scriptures will come up. You can download into your phone and learn these in Christ realities. When you are tempted, tested, and tried, then you're going through your day. You're having a test, a temptation, a trial. Draw on the scripture that pertains to your situation. They have Bible promise books. People learn. If you're dealing with this, here's the promise for that. That's a good place to start if you're a new Christian and are just learning the Word of God. Once you get those verses in you that pertain to that particular thing, you won't have to get the book out anymore. The Holy Spirit will bring you that verse when you get into a similar situation. When you are tempted, tested, and tried, draw on Scripture that pertains to your situation. There will be enough power, enough power, in those words of scripture to demolish any stronghold, to tear down any reasoning or imagination and bring every opposing force into obedience to Christ. Authority that you have. Hallelujah. Use the scripture to make your stand, make your stand and stand firmly on it. Now, again, the key in all of this is you, the Spirit. The key is in you, the Spirit. If you are born again, then your Spirit is full of Holy Spirit, of the Holy Spirit and power. Your recreated Spirit is Christ in you, the hope of glory. All you have to do to conquer anything is to speak the word of God with your spirit, inwardly or verbally if necessary. And the anointing that is in you and in the word will immediately go to work to take away the pressure, the anxiety, the stress, the unease, the hurts, and give you peace. You, the spirit, you are a spirit. Don't let your emotions and your mind get the upper hand. Don't let the body get the upper hand. Don't let your will be stubborn and try to do what it wants. No, I don't want to quote the word. No, you know, just turn your head for a minute. Lord, I just want to punch that guy. See, your will wants to do the punching, not your spirit, because the wrath of man works not the righteousness of God. And God's ultimate goal is to see that person you want to punch get saved. And if you're not the one to lead into the Lord, it may be someone else. And you doing that as a Christian may shut the door. A brother offended is harder to be one than a fortified city. You just work with people that have been offended by churches or preachers. Oh boy. 
The Word and the Spirit are your daily helpers. Jesus said that as you overcome the evil of today, that as you're overcoming the evil of today, the Word sanctifies you and sets you apart from negative emotions, from sins, the past, confusion, indecision. These are all things that God wants to set you apart from. And when he gives you a verse of scripture in a particular situation, that's the verse that's your sword of the spirit that he intends you to use to set you apart from whatever it is that's trying to get a hold of you, to pull out that fiery dart. John 17, 17, Jesus was praying and he said, Father, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Make them pure and holy through teaching them your words of truth. That's a prayer Jesus prayed. Imagine that the Father still answering that prayer. <clears throat> yes, he is. Did Jesus pray that prayer in faith even about you? Yes, he did. So whatever it is that troubles you, the devil is not going to get the best of you. The Father will give you the word in order to sanctify you from that force that's working against you. As you use the word in this way, you will experience consistent victory over any problem of short or long standing. I know I've been through deliverance from depressions and anxieties, suicidal thoughts and all those things. The Spirit of God is on earth to help you be what you desire. And if you are a believer, then I know you desire to be a father pleaser. You desire to be a disciple of Jesus. You desire to be Christ in your soul, in your body, and in your life. Romans 8.29 says, For whom he God did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. So no matter what role you are filling as a woman, daughter, sister, wife, mother, employee, employer, mayor, or president, or whatever it is in your country who is the head of the country. God's will, no matter what one of those roles that you're fulfilling, God's will is that you be conformed to the image of his son in the fulfillment of that life function. And him in you is sufficient for whatever arises as you perform those functions. God's desire is that you be conformed to the image of his son. And whatever function that you're fulfilling, God wants you to be conformed to the image of his son in performing that function. And he's put the Holy Spirit in you to help you to do that. <clears throat> That's what it means when it says you're complete in him. So whatever the function is, I mean of a godly function, of course, a God-ordained function for your life, plan for your life, you will be able to complete it and maintain being and grow up into the image of God's Son while you're doing it. There is a, this is a process of growing, though. Everything we've been talking about, I'm casting a vision for you. I could talk to you about what is at the earthly level, your circumstances, your issues every day. But basically what I'm doing in this project is setting a vision, casting a vision, something for you to achieve, something for you to go toward. You're a new creation woman in your spirit. I want to see it carried over into your soul, in your body, in your life. That's what God wants. And I want to assist him by pointing, look this, look at that. And you say, oh my goodness, I'm sure, I don't know about that. I could ever do that. You will grow up. This is a growing process. We grow up into him, Ephesians 4 says, 
in all things. So don't get frustrated. Well, I can't. I'll never. I won't. If you're a new creature, you have the foundation laid. God will give you time. Yes, it may be three steps forward and two steps back for a while. But the goal is not to live life that way through your whole human experience. The, the goal is to be able to go steadily forward, making progress in God, progress mentally and emotionally, and being complete in your soul, your body, in Christ. <clears throat> be patient with yourself, but be consistent. That's the thing. If you sin, confess your sin, get up, dust yourself off, refresh yourself. Now, wait a minute. What am I? I am a spirit. Keep pouring in the clean water. If you have a habit you want to get over, keep pouring in the clean water. I am a spirit. What kind of spirit am I? I'm a new creation, according to 2 Corinthians 5.17. And who is that new creation? Well, according to Galatians 2.20, it's no longer I that lives, but it's Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And get your mind back focused that that's the goal, living that out. And get your mind off the sin and looking back at the past and start going forward, forward into the goal that is set before you. That's what Paul said in Philippians 3. I forget the things that are behind. Paul let go of his history as a murderer. Let go of your past history in sin. Let go of any present history in sin. Because when you ask forgiveness for it, you get cleansed and God forgets it too. So now, we're going to close today's lesson with affirming yourself in Christ. And at the end, I have some different confessions here for you to make. And I will upload a copy of these notes so they'll be accessible to you. Affirm yourself in Christ. So I want you just to repeat this after me, if you would. As a new creation, I can successfully function in life as a woman as a daughter, as a wife, as a mother, as a businesswoman. I know all of them may not apply to you, but you can pick out the ones that do. Now let's go on. Jesus successfully handled every situation, every person, every child he met in life. He successfully handled the devil, his own death, burial, and resurrection, and the launching of his church. And he is the one who is the new creation in me. I will live out of him who is within me. I will draw on his wisdom. I will live the same successful life he lived as he lives through me. Hallelujah. Jesus has a way he wants to live a successful life uniquely through you with the talents the abilities, the gifts, the personality, the female body, the female soul that you have. Hallelujah. He is expressing himself uniquely through each part of his body. And he is able to do it successfully. Hallelujah. Well, let's pray. I just, if you don't know Jesus today, if you happen to tune in to this lesson somehow, which I pray the Holy Spirit directs your feet to this good news. If you don't know Jesus, 
and your life needs some success in it, needs some completion. You're broken mentally, emotionally, spiritually, maybe physically, maybe in your will, you just don't even want to live anymore. Well, I want to offer you a fresh start today by offering you Jesus. He is alive. Have you thought about it? He did raise from the dead, and he's alive today, 2,000 years later. And if you bow your head right now and you tell him, Jesus, I need a fresh start. I admit that my life has been full of sin, and I have reaped the results. And right now, I accept your death on the cross. I believe you died for my sin debt before God. And I receive your cleansing blood to cause me to be a new creation and to begin a new life. And Jesus, I know this is a prayer that is you always answer. And now I thank you that you come into my heart Oh, I thank you that God is now my Father, and I am his child. In your name I pray. Amen. Well, God bless you all. Next week, we're going to do some <clears throat> looking at the sum of the whole matter. You're going to enjoy it. God bless you. Share this with someone. Let's pass around our good news of the new creation woman. Ann Windsor, signing off till next week.